to Warriors Kings. I want to start at the end of the game. So the Warriors win 126 to 125. So the Kings tried to do a thing, I think. I Without seeing what Mike Brown maybe said about a post-game or like looking at the exact diagram or so, and everything, the Celtics, to me, this looked like a, a stealing of what the Celtics will do with Jason Tatum sometimes at the end of games, which is they will put him in the backcourt and let him gain a ton of steam and have a screen set for him and let him get into the lane. It makes a ton of sense to try to do that with De'Aaron Fox. Mm-hmm. And the Warriors snuffed out that entire possession. They defended the end of that, that last shot for the Kings perfectly. The Kings' last shot is not anything by Fox, who was the most clutch player in the league all season. He did get into the lane in open space. He had to give up the ball. Harrison Barnes because that contested three, and this series is now 2-2. This game was awesome. This game was high-paced. This game was video game numbers. Kings hit some threes for the first time all series, shot 40% from three. Fox, 4 of 11. Murray was uh, – Murray was five of seven, which was a, a big deal considering kind of he's been just kind of like a spot non very good starter for much of this series. But this series is full go. This series is going down to the wire, and the Warriors needed to get this one, and they did. So, do you not think that was the best plan of action on that last possession, or what was your com- what did you come away with? Because you you didn't seem to love it, but I feel like getting a Barnes. It was contested, but it was. A late contest by Steph Curry. It's not like it was Draymond Green, you know, getting a fingertip on it. So I don't sure, hate that just, shot. I don't either. But considering what I think you were trying to get, like that, if that, they just seemed like they had that one plan and then it just like unraveled. And that was just kind of a tricky thing. And it's like, you're like, they clearly had this plan to get Fox like loose and it just, just kind of, yeah, but I mean, look, there. like it's he's not, a, not it, getting the ball all the way, he's not getting all the way to the basket in that spot against the Warriors defense. So if it, if anyone thinks that was like on the table, I kind of think you're wrong. Like even at his best in this series, he's really only getting layups when he mm-hmm. runs in transition. There's no half court dunks in the lane by De'Aaron Fox happening because Kevon Looney and Draymond Green have been very good. And Steph jumped the screen and, and, and forced him to give it up. Obviously, you want the ball maybe in his hands more, but if the choices are a a contested pull-up mid-range jumper by De'Aaron Fox or a Harrison Barnes catch-and-shoot kind of pretty open left-wing three, it's your veteran on your team. It's not like the ball ended up in Murray's hands or Dav- sure. Davion Mitchell's hands or whatever. Like Barnes, you know, he's one of six from deep. Maybe that affects how you feel about it because he wasn't necessarily the hot hand by any means. I don't know. I think... All things considered, it's a fine shot, um, given the circumstances, you know, with having to well, to bring it from the sideline and, and not getting, you know, a full head of steam and trying to manufacture that head of steam. Like, there's only so much you can really do in that spot, and I, I feel like a kick out from Fox to Barnes is a, a pretty good end result. Yeah, I'm just being a hater. I'm watching it back now, like, on loop, uh, pulled up. There's a really useful Twitter account called Hoops underscore Bot that pulls like clips from Reddit, and uh, this I'm watching their like their clip of it. So like what I what I what stands out is number one, I love that the Warriors put Draymond on Fox for like long stretches to close and the they game. Did it yeah. here to close the game. I thought it was in a little bit in the third as well, and it worked. Yeah. Uh, Curry does a great job on this to when he when they're they're trying to get Fox on Curry. Because barn screens, it's not a good screen, but Curry steps out, he pokes the ball free. That, to me, is really maybe the key of the whole play, is that Curry pokes the ball free, and Fox has to recollect and then switch directions again. And mm-hmm. then he runs into Draymond, who's just not going to, like... De'Aaron Fox is awesome. In, in a tight space like that, he's not going to get around Draymond. He's not going to beat Draymond physically ever, even if he has a full head of steam. So and I he's think like 6'2", right, right? So, like, you know, there's only so many options yeah. at that point. Yeah, and it's, you know, you're right. You get the shot, Curry can test all that stuff, um, and then you get the the Malik Monk, like, slam of frustration at the end. But, like, the Warriors just, I think, just at that moment, like, that you see, that's to me, that is, like, know-how. That is, like, yeah that is just those guys showing up. And Draymond being in that spot and doing what he did, it's just, like, he is in that spot. There's probably no one I would trust more in the NBA to make that kind of play and to be kind of exactly like locked into that kind of moment. And look, kudos to him. He came back, comes off the bench and he like defensively is like a real, real, yeah. like real reason. Even though Fox like has had this great series and big series and has the most points of any Kings player over the first four games of a series. He beat Oscar Robertson's previous record in this game. Like Draymond kind of, did, like he doesn't even have a good offensive game, but what Draymond does, 
I think it was really a huge, huge part in how like the Warriors just did enough defensively to kind of get out of this one. Absolutely. Um, funny that uh, we were criticizing oh, Dylan actually, Brooks for. Do you want to? Do you want to? I got a Mike Brown quote about the final play. Here we go. Okay. Mike Brown. This is from uh, Matt George, who does Locked On Kings. Mike Brown said the plan for the final shot was to flatten out the defense and live with Fox's attempt. Harrison Barnes decided to set a screen to get a switch for Fox, and it resulted in the open three. Um, Brown said he liked the call by Barnes, but that's so that apparently was improv. That apparently was like a, a read in the situation by Harrison Barnes. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that makes sense. Obviously, I don't think that they were scripting the pass to Barnes. I just think if that's the bailout opportunity, it's not the worst thing in the world. But uh, funny that we were making fun of Dylan Brooks for being a little too confident offensively after getting, uh, you know, some stuff happening to him off the court. And then Draymond did the same thing and also was pretty inefficient. But I guess, you know, seven assists, zero turnovers and four offensive rebounds. That's probably the difference of why he's not going to get hit in, with that in the same way. Um, yeah, the Warriors, the way they play defense situations like that, they're able to take more risks than anybody in the NBA because they know each other and because they have a, a scheme and are coached and have the chemistry to take up more space than it feels like any other team of five people in basketball can. They're just they're just able to do that. And and I think it's it's awesome to see when it happens in those big moments. Steph Curry calling a timeout that they didn't have to give the Kings the chance. Not so great, but... Um, big picture on this series, Chris, I feel like one, two takeaways from this on, on more on Sacramento's side, Darren Fox deserves a huge amount of credit for the series basically being played on his terms. Like Steve Kerr is feeling like he needs to match the King's scoring. That's almost all coming from Fox, you know, in this game, Murray was able to make some spot-up threes, but other than that, nobody cracked 20 points. Monk didn't have it going. Sabonis didn't get to the free-throw line once. And mm -hmm. so Fox being great enough offensively that rather than try to slow him down, Kerr's instinct is we have to match his scoring. That's pretty impressive. I guess you could say that putting another defender would more be responding to Fox, but I really see it as he is so much of a threat to create every single time he's on the floor that... Kerr knows he needs to keep up with that, and that's pretty impressive. Um, he's a bona fide superstar, and this series to me is really, really showing that. I, I was unsure if obviously their ability to continue to play so fast would translate. That has translated, and I was worried if his jumper success would translate because this is really the first year from mid range and from three that he's made enough to make the defense pay. And obviously, there's a I think it's reasonable to be a little bit skeptical on that, that it's going to carry over when he's facing more defensive attention and everything else. And it has without a doubt, he's shooting 47% for mid range in this series, which would be still a career best mark, not quite the 51% he got in the regular season, but that's to be expected. And then heading into this game, he was 33% from deep and he made four of 11 tonight, which is just a touch over that. So that has carried over, and he's making them pay when they leave him open on the catch, when he pulls up from deep, when they go under the screen. Um, and obviously, you know, that that really deep pull-up mid-range jumper, that's almost a paint shot. It's like halfway between a floater and a jumper half the time. You're not really sure what he's going to do. That's going in, too. He's been huge. He is ascended. He is just dueling Curry. And, like... I, I love that we're seeing them go back and forth at each other at times and like Fox is drawing fouls off of Curry and like really frustrating him defensively. Like it is this is just a real elevation and particularly with Sabonis not having this like a, a peak Sabonis series that this has just been kind of a hard matchup for him. I think it makes it what Fox is doing even more impressive. Mm -hmm. And if the, and if this game with the four of eleven from three, if that kind of buoys him forward as they go back home to Sacramento and the Kyle Bells are back and it's raucous and it's the series gets deeper and deeper that feels like only more of an advantage for, for Fox. And like, well, maybe this is like a, a sign of what is to come for these two guys. I think, I think that is just really interesting. And then I, I also look at Murray and it's like, is this, is this just a flash in the pan thing for Murray? Or is this like a, Hey, like this guy is hanging a little bit now and we can, we can get some of these threes from him. And maybe, maybe you don't need to worry about that. If Monk is hitting or if Herder is hitting, I mean, Herder only took one three in this game. And Don't think you can count on Herder seven. hitting. He's been really so bad. Maybe in this some series. of that changes, but I, I, you would feel pretty good to me if he can go in that environment and do that. I would feel pretty good about what, what you're getting from him in, in just that sense. 
Yeah, for sure. I mean, with Murray, there's nothing really making me feel like he can't keep it up because it's just a confidence thing for him. You know, um, they're going to be able to generate threes for basically whoever they want, whether that's in the pick and roll on drive and kick stuff or whether that's with the dribble handoffs from Sabonis. I thought that part of his game was working pretty well today, mm -hmm. better than it has in other games. Um, and maybe they just switch it over and they say, okay, less less Herder on some of those dribble handoffs and more Murray, and, and that can, can help them go forward. Um, I think the Kings are the better team right now. To me, uh, it feels like they have better depth and more balance. They're not so tethered to one player like the Warriors have been with Steph, although Clay and, and Poole played really well tonight, even, even Wiggins. So maybe there is more balance developing for Golden State, but I feel like through four games, Sacramento has had that. But I think they need to finish it in six, and that would revol involve doing it on the road. They've, they've dug themselves a hole now by not stealing one of these games in San Francisco where they now either need to win it on the road or try to take a game seven from Golden State, and neither one of those sounds like a whole lot of fun. No. Um I think that I think where I go is like I wonder how the Kings feel this as they go forward and like I I one of the, I think having Harrison Barnes on their team is going to be particularly helpful you know even if he has off shooting nights and even if he has some of these moments I think having a guy that won a championship that has been through things with that Warriors team that can tell can kind of help keep them grounded like Fox has never been through this Sabonis has never been through this like they're going to go into waters that they've never gone into before um, as this gets deeper and deeper and they're going to have to go back to they're going to have to go back to Oakland or San Francisco it's not technically Oakland anymore um, I almost called it Oracle and it's it's also not, not that yeah I mean I don't know I feel I, like Malik think, Monk needs to I play think, better would be more important to me than yeah, Harrison yeah, but, Barnes but, putting I, his arm I'm around not, somebody's shoulder you know no, I'm not saying that's more important, but I'm saying it like if I was like feeling optimistic about the Kings, that to me is part of the reason I would feel like some optimism. It's like I think that is just like a useful thing to have. I mean, like, they just like, haven't I, been look, scared may... at all in this series. I don't know who you no. attribute it to, but they have just come ready every single night. And, and that's part of why I feel like they're better is I think you would have looked at the talent and the overwhelming nature of Sacramento's offense and felt like that was an advantage even before – game one ever started but you would have had this in the in the back of your mind can they execute can they be as confident can they be as consistent as golden state and yeah maybe some end game scenarios have gone golden state's way because curry is a defense breaker and draymond is a genius and all this stuff but i think you would look at that and say that they've checked those boxes they are as confident as they need to be they have executed at a very high level and they are pretty consistent i mean they're scoring 120 something points a night in this uh -huh. series it's not like they've had big slippage I guess game three was was pretty ugly for them all things considered but even then it wasn't like they rolled over no I mean both teams are putting up pretty good offensive numbers um pretty high offensive ratings like they're they're close every time neither team's getting to the rim very much which is kind of interesting there's like a lot of there's there's a good amount of threes and there's a ton of mid-range shots like this area yeah. this game in particular kind of settled and took a lot of middies the, the other question i have for golden state too is what do you do does draymond just now come off the bench going forward is this no, just like I a thing that you do game. now okay i think he'll start the next game because um you just need pool to be the the secondary creator when when steph's not in there and, and there's kind of a million ways to get to that right it's like he could be a direct replacement for Steph. He could be the first sub in when Looney leaves the court in the first quarter. He could be any, you know, I think that's what they were trying to do there is not get off to a bad start offensively and let Sacramento take them that, that way. Maybe they do. Maybe they keep it. Um, I, I feel like it would actually, to me, be more likely that they would bring Looney off the bench going forward than Draymond. And we've seen them do that before. So that's yeah, just go my just, guess. But go. I, I still feel like the Kings need to maybe start Monk over Herder, personally. And maybe that is another chess move that kind of throws everything into flux. But I just don't think, like, at, at, before at least Herder was just missing the shots he did take. Today he didn't even take them. You got to do something about that. Yeah, I think uh, I think that's fair. I... I I hope this series goes seven. That's all I really want. Yep. It's been the best one. It's been by far the best one, I think, in terms of stakes, in terms of what's actually happened on the court, in terms of what's at, what what could happen if one team loses or one team doesn't. I mean, the Kings pull this off. This is ripple effects. Yeah. Like emanating out of Northern California. 